my goodness, this must be the place. If you've been watching our show, welcome back to Downtime. If this is your first time watching, well, what took you so long? I'm still your host, Robert Jackson. And uh, I think I just heard a bunch of you viewers out there groan, which is strange because this is pre-recorded. But we have a terrific show. I mean it this time, we really do. And we know we have a diverse audience out there in GRBC land. But we want to focus on our younger viewers. And when I say young, I mean that zero to one demographic because they don't move much. They're not crawling around or walking yet because once they're mobile and they start scooting around, they won't sit still for nobody, least of all me. And the terrible two crowd, that's out of the question. Forget about the threes. See, people make a big deal about the terrible twos, but the threes, as you guys all know, is what you have to watch out for. Twos are bad, don't get me wrong. But when they're three, they're bigger, stronger, faster, louder. It's like raising a Chucky doll without all the sharp objects. And it's not like once their third birthday rolls around and they wake up saying, oh, sorry, mom and dad, about all that stuff I did when I was two. I was a little bit out of it for that whole year. But I'm three now, and I'm ready for a fresh start. What do you say? Trust me, it does roll over until they're about four, so you're going to be in trouble until then. But like I said, we have a terrific show from GRPD, Gila River Police. We have K-9 Officer Karma along with Officer Sandy Brown. We also have Adrian Thomas. He's going to be taking it home for our musical showcase segment of the show. And as always, we have the Downtime Band and my co-host, Mr. Claude Jackson. We're going to bring all this up and get the party started one more time for the Downtime Band. Come on. This is like listening to your favorite playlist at home or something. Like these guys, they just play like any, any song you want, all my favorite hits now. But before we get into that, I wanna bring up, as you guys know, I'm not alone in this experience. I wanna introduce you guys to Claude Jackson, my co-host, Claude. really feeling the new intro we were <sighs> supposed to correct that if I'm not mistaken man we overcorrected it and it feels good okay no and then we need to shorten up this maybe we'll have you come in from the back or they just pop just, up from behind the table up. or something uh, we'll, we'll work on that guys we'll just we'll okay, come up no, like that don't work on it don't <laughs> work on it stop working on it okay Claude um nice mm -hmm. Coat, if you don't mind me saying. Oh, thank you. It's brand new. Look at that. We've been we've been doing well with the season. I think and it's a little too brand new, if well, I'm not mistaken. What do we got back here? Uh, Is this a little something that maybe you forgot to take off? Well, look, I am gonna take it back. Okay. So I mean, I can't afford forty dollars. Uh, the only problem I got off. Make sure that there's, they don't check the sweat stains inside. Okay. Otherwise, I'll be all right. Didn't you have a jacket and ripped it, and then you tried to take it back, and they saw some of the perspiration? Yeah, those guys at Kohl's really messed me up. Okay. But um, any other tags we got to worry about? Did you already <laughs> take no, them I'm off good. Of the I mean, uh, you know, well, look, I have a weird shape, all right? That's just who I am. It's what it is. Um, I suffer from something called Claude Jackson disease. My arms are very, very short. Short arms, folks. Yeah, yeah, and so for... But you got a big chest, big shoulders. Yeah, I got a big heart. My cardiologist doesn't like that, but... Okay, so big shoulders, big chest, fairly big feet, short arms. Short legs. Head size, you were, you were known as a young child for having yeah, yeah. substantial head, right? Well, you, you mentioned the, the one, two, and three-year-olds. Back then, I was just all head. Yeah. And my body finally grew into my head. So yeah, so that's good. for all you youngsters out there, you got a big head. Don't worry, your body yeah. will catch up. Look, and you parents out there, you look at your kid and it looks kind of weird, your kid, and you're worried about it, don't worry. Someday he or she can grow up to look like me. No, um, I, I think that's good advice because we are trying to, you know, secure that younger crowd, like I said. So if you're in the crib, if you're in... Uh, the nursery or whatever, maybe we can get this, start playing in some of those preschools or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. We want to be bigger than Baby Shark. 
exactly. So I think we're doing the good stuff, man. I don't know if you got a chance to look at who we have on today's show, but uh, GRPD K9 Karma. And don't let the name fool you because Karma is probably one of the baddest dogs you've ever seen. Oh, yeah. She's a, she's a canine uh, officer, and so we had the band make sure that they uh, put some of their stuff back into their car. Yeah, we're not gonna be having her uh, sniff or, or get excited for any reason, trust me. So there's no evidence around here, trust me. We had the place searched and swept already. Zero it, tolerance. Zero tolerance. And then also uh, Adrian Thomas, he's gonna be our oh. musical act for today's performance and we're very excited and we hope he's yeah. gonna- uh, Very impressive. Yeah, we hope he's gonna do all the stuff that he's known for. So, man, we're just excited about this young man. And, of course, we have the Downtime Band. I mean, this wouldn't be Downtime without the band, right? No, no, not at all. And I heard these guys are asking for a little bit more money, so we may not be able to afford them next time around. So. I think they're asking for some money, not more money. I don't know, I think we're even paying them. You know what, I thought like some free water and some free snacks was gonna do it, but uh, yeah. apparently it, it costs a lot to haul all these yeah. instruments around. Apparently. But, People want money for their services. What kind of America is this? Yeah, I mean, if I was a musician, I would want to pay, play yeah. for free. It's Exposure, the beauty of the right? art, man. Come on. Yeah, so these guys are pushing it. No, but uh, without any further ado, we're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back with uh, GRPD K9 Karma, and then we're going to wrap it up with Adrian. Like I said, terrific show. You don't want to go anywhere. In our downtime band, they're going to play us out for a little tiny, teeny, minuscule, tiny break. So don't you go nowhere. Downtime band, do that thing. That's right, yeah, folks, yeah. downtime bad, pulling another good one out of the hat. So uh, like I said before, we have a wonderful show lined up, and we weren't, we're going to bring out our first guest here. Um, what happened to the table? Yeah, where'd our table go, first of all? See, this is what I'm talking about. We go to break, and then I come back, stuff is missing, okay? You yeah. guys better, this plant better not move anywhere, I'm yeah. telling you guys. Okay, so um, we have a uh, important part. Yeah, important part of our public safety here in the Gila River yep. Indian community. Now we are able to get uh, not just a regular officer, but I'm talking about a canine officer. Let's welcome uh, Canine Karma along with Officer Sandy Brown. Karma Officer Brown, is she picking up anything right now? Is she? Uh, <laughs> she's just very attentive. Okay, oh, great. so she's not getting any cues. You don't need to start searching, do you? Uh, not yet. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, um, <laughs> Officer uh, uh, Brown, so tell, tell us about Karma. What, what does she do when it comes to Gila River PD? Karma is actually my partner. Um, she's my newest partner. I've had her for about a year now. Um, our basic responsibilities are to assist patrol officers um, on what we would call a hot call. Hot call. Yes, sir. Um, the more dangerous calls, things involving violence, uh, weapons. She does a lot of drug work. Dang, so the big stuff. Yes, sir. She's, okay. a, she's a pretty big part of what we do. So um, if I may then, um, so she, on a hot call, so you, you're called in, and so she's like the first one through the door, or what? what if, if it would involve 
uh, actually entering a house, if there was a barricaded suspect or you know, someone hiding somewhere, then yes, sir, she would be the first one in. Bravery, right um, there. Yeah, this, yes. this animal does things that, yeah, you couldn't pay me enough to do. So what, what type of dog is she? She looks like a unique girl, breed. Girl. Um, all of her paperwork says Belgian Malinois. Okay. But okay. because of her appearance and, and a lot of the way that she acts, uh, I truly believe that she also has some Dutch Shepherd in her. Okay. You know what? I, I think I detected a little Dutch Shepherd, but I didn't want to say anything. Um, <laughs> so, Professional here. So, <laughs> so when, I, when I'm driving uh, to work, I, I go through the 51st Avenue, Pecos area. I see a lot of dogs. So what is the difference between those dogs that I see out there roaming around versus someone like Karma? When, when we go to look for a, a working dog, um, we actually go through a testing process. And what we look for, for like the drug work, is a high what we call a play drive, a dog who really loves to ch chase a toy and bring it back to you and wants to play, play, play. Okay. Uh, for the patrol work or the suspect apprehension work, we look for a very high prey drive, um, which instills, when, when, dogs are, when dogs are very young and they're still with their mother, a lot of the dogs don't want to leave mom. They want to stay there where it's safe and comfortable. Um, if we, if we get to see dogs that young, uh, we look for the ones that are wandering away, who want to be on their own. Mm. Um, they're, they have a, a higher prey drive and they're willing to go, and go, go, go. Wow, well I think uh, with, with that in mind, you know, it kind of lets us know that this is a special, uh, unique animal. So um, any of our viewers, you guys might recognize Karma, so uh, <laughs> yeah. trust me, she's not gonna get you, but um, routine type of call. She can sniff drugs out and also attack, and then uh, what else goes into it if she's um, out there in the field? They do narcotics mm -hmm. detection, sn smelling drugs. Um, they're trained to find people if someone's hiding in a house or in the desert or anywhere. She's trained to find people. They're also trained to find evidence and articles. Um, maybe a suspect ran and it took a while for patrol officers to catch him. And they think maybe he threw away a gun. Okay. Or hey. So when a, when, when, a, when, when a guy say he's getting chased or whatever, they see the dog. It's end game. They want to they they want to give up. I'm guessing. A, a very <laughs> a very high percentage of the time, yes, sir. Okay. So um, some special things you've witnessed while being partners with Karma, like uh, anything extraordinary that you can uh, recall right away that she's been involved in. In the last nine months, I've seen her find suspects that have been hiding in the desert. Mm. Um, I've seen her drug-wise, she has, um, I believe it was 30 pounds of methamphetamine Golly. that she found in a vehicle. Um, one of the big things we run into, especially on the highway when we're out there sometimes, um, people have medical marijuana cards, yep. which is understandable, but on the community, the Gila River Indian community does not recognize medical marijuana. Zero tolerance. You and they have that. a zero tolerance policy. Zero tolerance, see? So just keep in mind so you don't get yourself in trouble. When you came out here, you re referenced Karma as your partner, okay? Yes, so sir. that kind of tells me that you guys work extremely close together. It seems like there's a, a, an understanding between you two. So um, how does that relationship work? It's uh, definitely a family-style relationship. Our dogs go home with us every day. They live with us at home. They're part of our family seats. So not only do you get to work with her, but you know someone's creeping in the backyard. You, uh, you got the best uh, dog around uh, for that. I feel that. sorry for whoever climbs over my back oh my fence. God. Wow. Where do you live again? I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess the you know the, these uh, these partners. I mean, they play a big role not only with the police department but with our veterans. Uh, overseas and the connection becomes really strong be, be, with them, right? Absolutely, like I said, they go home with us. Uh, our families, they become part of the family, not only for me, but for my entire family, our other handlers' entire family. They, uh, they're just, I, I spend, because of the hours that I work, I work mostly at nighttime with her, oh. um, and they change, but when I get home and go to sleep, my family gets up and goes to school and goes to work. I wake up to come back to work, and after I leave for work, they come back home. Yeah. So I spend more time with Karma. Ah. Uh, other than the weekends, I spend more time with my dog than I do my whole Wow, well, that's family. a connection right there. Okay, if, if, if I could uh, talk with Karma real quick. So what is Officer Brown really like? Yep. Come on, let's get the dirt. Come Remember, on. I'm sitting you right can, here. You can tell us. 
One of the great things about the canine unit, um, you guys have probably seen them out in the community doing demonstrations, um, yeah. and you get to witness some of the commands that they're able to perform. So we're gonna take a quick break, and you're gonna see Karma in action, yes. taking down a perp, I guess, <laughs> an alleged <laughs> perp in this case. So we're gonna come back with Karma, and she's gonna do some uh, terrific things for all you guys to witness, to see what an amazing uh, animal and officer that Karma is. So we're gonna take a short break. Downtime Band is gonna play us out. Don't go nowhere. We're back, so uh, we're gonna get a little demonstration going on right here. Uh, Steal. Players, you can stay here, or you can just get off the stand while we have this demonstration. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I think those are some smart guys. I'm gonna do the same, and um, Karma is gonna go ahead and do a little demonstration for us, and I'll turn it over to our people here. Hello, everybody. So, uh, my last will and testament, I leave everything to my daughter. And my wife, you guys can sort it out. So as you can see now, I've changed, obviously. Now this is to, to give you guys an idea what it's like when she's out uh, training and how she goes about her business as a canine dog. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. It was fun doing it. And um, we have uh, an agitator here to help me. So... And I'm gonna turn around and she's gonna squat a little bit for me. And then just look at her. She's gonna come in at you. And then if she takes a little bit, dip your. Oh, there you go. And she's gonna come up and she should bite right here. Okay. If not, she's gonna bite here. Okay. Okay. Not too long. Suspect, show me your hands, I'll send the dog. I'm sorry! I'm sorry, I'll pay the child support! I would say it's you! Ah, then go to you, Ah, come on, come on, come on! Ah, throw it back! Come on! Come on! That guy is not hurting my dog! Karma! Poof! Here! Good girl, man. Watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him. Good girl, good girl. That's a good girl. Here. Okay, all right, everybody. We're gonna take a short break. I'm gonna change my underwear and we'll be right back. Welcome to downtime, everybody. We want to thank the downtime band playing us in once again. These guys just keep getting better and better. Yeah. Now, uh, you guys have seen the videos. You've heard the tracks. The legend is true. Trust me, I've seen it with my own eyes. We have a very special guest for the musical and talent showcase portion of our show. This kid, young man, excuse me, he's been doing all kinds of wonderful things uh, on the music scene, man, he's been playing with different bands. He's been doing this and that. He's got a wonderful solo routine, but we got him here today. Let's give a warm downtime welcome to Adrian Thomas. How's it going, guys? The song is called Take Me Home.
my goodness, Adrian Thomas. Adrian, your money, baby. All right. Uh, we're going to bring Adrian back for a little chit chat. Uh, so don't go nowhere. Uh, stay tuned for downtime. And let's give it up one more time for my main man, Adrian Thomas. Just busted out of jail just here at jail Downtime. Break. Want to thank uh, the Downtime Band once again for keeping it lively, keeping it entertaining. Mm. But you want to talk about entertainment, man? We just had yeah. this guy. Here he is, Adrian Thomas. So in the flesh, did a fantastic performance, man. Musical. Um, I thought it was very, you know, sophisticated type music. And we just really want to thank you for coming down. So, um, who is Adrian Thomas? Who is this guy that we've been hearing about? <laughs> kind of let us into your world, man. Who are you? Where are you? Where'd you come from? Did you just come down from space? What's the deal? <laughs> okay, so uh, my name is Adrian D. Thomas. Um, where do I start, man? <laughs> okay, see. So, um, so you were born. We know. I that. was born. Okay, you. I were was born. brought into this world. Okay, it's crazy. Natural birth. I'm guessing. <laughs> yes. More or less. Okay. More so or yeah. less scientific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. So you're a Greek member. Uh, you went to school out there. You graduated high school. So fill us in on the little backstory. Yeah. So um, uh, I was born in Montana, um, but my family is all from Hill River Indian community. Mm -hmm. So uh, I grew up in Colorado with my mom. Um, then. I ended up coming back out here to spend time with my family, and you know, here I am. Like, I came here in 2010, and I've been here ever since. You're stuck, basically. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say stuck. I'd say um, I love you. I love being here. Okay. So I like staying here. Yeah. Yeah. How about that, oh, man? Fine, he's right he's this guy. He's he's proud of where he comes from, and so when he when he looks out at Gila River, man, he gets uh, 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 inspired. So, the song you played, um, it's not like you just woke up one day and. You know, this whole musical package was put together. You had to learn. You had to uh, practice. So when did you first pick up the guitar? So I first picked up the guitar when I was 12 years old. Um, my step-grandfather, his name is Neil Benkatiwa. Um, he's the one who actually gave me my first guitar. And, you know, it was a, it was a little PV electric. Mm -hmm. It was like the ones you get for the little junior kids yeah. who yeah, were yeah, just yeah. barely starting out. And so I was like, yo, sitting there and just practicing every day. Like, Honestly, I was I was pretty much a loner as a kid. Like I didn't really much have I didn't really have much friends. He was a loner, Damn. folks. I was a loner, he guys. Was by himself. I was a loner. Yeah, you've been on the music scene as at at this young age. So, the last couple years musically, what have you been up to? Recently, over the summer, I've been touring with a band called the Cody Blackbird Band. Okay. Um, I love and respect them deeply. They're my brothers. They they've taken me on a journey that no 18 year old <laughs> kid from the reservation has been on. I don't think so, mm -hmm. but. They took they took me all around the country, like, really? to play music with them. And one of the stops we played on our on our journey was Van's Warp Tour. Van's Warp Tour. Van's Warp Tour. Here oh. or somewhere else? Uh, it was in North Carolina, actually. Nice, man. We're just really excited for all your success as a young man. Definitely don't stop. And um, we might want to bring this guy back. I mean, yeah. come on, this <laughs> this might be uh, one of those repeat guests that you'll be seeing on Downtime more and more and more. So. Um, they can see you on this show, the fans, but can they uh, get a hold of you on social media? What's that like? Yeah, you can definitely get a hold of me on social media. On Facebook, you can look me up, Adrian D. Thomas. Uh -huh. The Adrian middle name is D, just a simple D. D, come That's on, it doesn't get any easier D. than that, D. <laughs> and then um, what other uh, platforms? Um, I'm also on Instagram. I got some musicians right here. Uh, it, the custom goes as they play us out, maybe uh, while they do our little theme song. You could pick up your axe and, and just do some leads over. How's that yes, sound? Yes. So I we want to thank you. everybody. We want to thank Adrian. We want to thank the canine. We want to thank all of our guests today at Downtime. We had such a wonderful uh, time and experience. We hope you guys liked it too. So we're going to go ahead and close out this wonderful show with the Downtime Band and our good buddy Adrian sitting in. On behalf of my co-host, Mr. Claude Jackson. I'm your host, Robert Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.